Yes, yo, my name is Emaya Baga. I am here at the Social Media Masterclass, organized by some very great people. Look, it was beautiful, it was intimate, it was an amazing afternoon slash evening. I was here for the afternoon slash evening session. I know it started in the morning. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're online and you see so much negative things about Nigeria and Nigerian youth, but being in places like this just fills my heart with hope because we're having conversations about how we can be better, how we can improve, uh, and um, Nigeria is going to be fine. When people minds like this are here, having conversations like this, Nigeria is going to be fine. Shout out to the organizers. I'm really blessed to be here, and uh, please keep it up. Keep the conversation going, and uh, yeah, that's it for me. So that is, that is Ali Baba. Please, a round of applause for him. You may come and sit down, sir. He doesn't use the walking stick here, so. Can we have one more chair, please? One more chair here, please. Now, that's the loan, the influence that it has, and everything that lies today, have, what struggles do they have? How can we make money? Then what happens if Instagram goes down today? What happens to those models and all of that, you know? To see and give a little of a little super girl, please. I'm very, 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 very early. And it's one of those early demonstrations of comedy as a very important vehicle for social media. Um, they started by curating um, funny stuff on Instagram and all of that. Then they rebranded now to accommodate to accommodate a lot of stuff that connect Africans and all of that. Um, um, and that's funny Africa pigs. They now like to be called funny Africa, right? They have a book here for everyone. I'm sure you get your copy um, um, at some point during the program. Oh, okay, good, good. Um, uh, um, that's also a first of its kind. Then I have somebody, a few guys, to leave the client side to move to the agency side, who was head of digital strategy at Nigerian Beerist, and who left to become a director at Ventura Media. Ventura Media is a, is a, how do I explain? They are a digital agency, but they do more than agency work. Uh, um, uh, um, you know, they build platforms. They monetize platforms, they buy media, they create content, and all of that. And, you know, his name is Tomiwa Alade Komo. The fifth person, um, the format I think we should use is to take presentations from each person first, just a brief summary, like a personal case study, and then we can have a conversation. There will not be a moderator for this conversation, so they will essentially be having a conversation and we can approach them and ask questions and all of that. Are we good? Is that fine? Yeah. So we should do this and then we go to lunch. Thank you so much. I think everything that I do has to do with uh, the what, the why, the how, the when, and the who. The important thing has to work around all of those. And once any of those check out, then I know what to do. Uh, if I need to promote a show, I'll first need to know what kind of show it is. I'll then need to know where I want to host this show. I want to know who I'm targeting with the show. I want to know what the content of the show is. So with social media, those dynamics had to check out. Uh, my first first uh, climb into social media was high five. And when I got there, I probably was uh, overwhelmed by the mediocrity and uh, didn't like it much. And then I joined Facebook. Okay, so this is what I did. I checked out the space and found out that the first resting place that I got was uh, Facebook. And uh, why I chose Facebook was that I saw that quite a lot of the people that were there were people that could relate to the stuff that I wanted to talk about. Every time I want to get into a space, I first check out the demography. Any space at all, I check out the demography. Uh, what are the ages of these people that are prevalent in the place? What are the ages of these people that are engaged in that space? And for Facebook, I found that uh, 
a lot of the people who were there were people who just wanted to to like people's pictures, connect with their friends, and uh, and continue to chat. And then some of them thought it was a dating site. And so those who thought it was a dating site were coming there for that same reason. Um, some other people thought it was uh, a GoFundMe account. So you get messages of people saying, I have this problem, can you help me out? Uh, this is the issue that I have, uh, I need just so and so money, I need, oh, I'm selling this and selling that, and people are promoting their businesses. So people use it as a marketing platform as well. But the social value for a lot of people who were relationship hunting was strong. And I made it clear from the start when I got on Facebook that I was not there for a popularity contest. That I wanted people who would either add value to my presence there or who would benefit from whatever I posted. And I've never changed. On Twitter, on Instagram, any platform at all. If, if you're not adding value to me and you're not getting any value from me, I don't think we have a middle point. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, why do you keep blocking people? Why do you keep up? If I come, if, which is why I don't follow a lot of private accounts, I need to first know what you have. If, you're, if you feel like your stuff needs to be private, then keep it to yourself. I know a lot of people prefer uh, uh, when you follow me, you get to know me. Mm. If you do not have anything that you want to share, first of all, only to very close people, then, then keep it to yourself. And you find that those people who have those private accounts, would always be jumping into conversations of people who have public accounts. And then the education is important. There are a lot of people who, I don't know if anybody remembers, about a few months ago, I had an issue with sarcasm. Yeah. These are, even a lawyer did not know what sarcasm was. A lawyer did not know what sarcasm was. I wrote something because I saw that the Falcons had won the competition. And they were not recognized, they were not celebrated. It was taking time for them to even meet Mr. President. And I wrote, I said, what, what are you people expecting? That we should come and beg you to come and receive awards? Do you think that you are the ones that are our problem? In the same light like they are people, that Wale Shoyinka wrote about. When Wale Shoyinka was bragging like an abiku, I can imagine how it would have been if Wale Shoyinka wrote that poem now. So people would have called him idiots. People are losing children. You are bragging on behalf of children that, that died. So, after I made sure the person understood what sarcasm was, I blocked him. And he saw me at an event when they had their MBA thing, I said, hey, I, Ali, well, you blocked me. I said, why? He said, I don't know. We were talking about Akasim or something. You explained it to me. I told you now I get it. And then you blocked me. I said, yes, because you have gotten it, then there was no need to keep up with you. At least I've taught you something. And I blocked the guy. <laughs> For that. Or if you are upset about something, then it gives you time to use swear words. So you get what I'm saying. I write something. And I say, I don't think that uh, the, the man should have said what he said. And somebody comes and says, fuck you. And I block the guy. And somebody is telling me, why are you blocking people? Because first thing is, if fuck you is the best way you can express yourself, then you are daft. Because it means that you cannot carry on a proper conversation. It's, what you have just done is like what they do on the street. When somebody says, ah, Kurumbe, and the guy says, why would you tell me to Kurumbe, and the next thing is point, Bwah. what you have just done is that you are limited by expressing yourself, and so the only way you have is violence. As they say, if the only thing you have is a hammer, everything is a nail. And so, instead of you to engage anybody, it is time to, to use swear words. And that is the reason a lot of them don't read. Uh, let me put let me put it better. That is why a lot of them can't read, 
And because they can't read, they only want to see a picture. So when you write anything that is more than three, four, five lines, you've lost them. So what they do is that they just sit and wait for comments. <laughs> and so as soon as the first comment comes, second comment comes, they read through the comment and say, okay, so this is what they're talking about. <laughs> and they don't read. And I read some of all those stuff. Some of them people still still comment. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody will just write, that was a great point. Ali, well done. Go down, you say, well done, Ali. Great points. <laughs> you are off my... Because it is not for it is not for wanting so many followers. Or it's not for following anybody. Okay. This other problem is... It's, education is important. You need to be enlightened to be on social media space. You need to also have courtesy of knowing who and who to engage. Sometimes you post something. I posted something one time. And I was a picture uh, I was standing like my wife was facing me and then I held her and posted a picture black and white and somebody said, hey, this woman carried for back oh. <laughs> there's no problem with saying, oh, shit